So welcome everybody. Uh, we appreciate you coming on the call. And this is really uh, one of what we hope will be several options that our, our transportation group that's been working for quite a while on the topic uh, can help you with. We're excited to have Valerie Hoff on the call and Valerie is gonna go into a presentation in just a couple minutes and share what, what they have to offer. And uh, I know that Valerie afterwards, uh, afterwards or you know, when the call or after later, would be more than happy to talk with you more in detail about the program. But we do encourage you to ask questions if you wanna drop questions in the chat box, or if you wanna ask questions at the end of, of her presentation, you're certainly welcome to do that. But it's, it's just something we wanted to offer and Valerie's talked to our group before. Uh, we think it's an it's a option, an opportunity, and it, it hits on a lot of the challenges that I think businesses have in terms of helping their employees get, get to work. So it, it checks a lot of the boxes and, and she'll talk more about that. Um, Obviously, you know, stay on, stay on uh, mute during the course of the call. And uh, again, at the end of the call, we'll have some questions. Um, I know a couple of our members are on here from the group. Nathan is on, Ben is on, Christy is on. So you can certainly uh, ask questions of us later. And if you as a business have ideas or things you kind of like us to look into in terms of transportation, please share those with us, whether it's, if it's not today, at some other point, because we're sending out surveys, we're talking to businesses, we're offering presentations like this to try to provide uh, opportunities for all of you to help your talent attraction needs. We know that's a huge challenge and transportation can be one element of that. So I think with that, I've got it recording, so that's good. Uh, Valerie, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to you and let you chat through your presentation. And again, put, put uh, questions in the chat box or you can ask them afterwards. So Valerie, go ahead. Perfect, let me get my screen up here. All right, can you see that okay? Absolutely. Awesome. Um, well, good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me a few minutes to chat today. Um, as Todd mentioned, my name is Valerie Hoff with Commute with Enterprise. Um, we are a division of Enterprise Rent-A-Car, so, or excuse me, Enterprise Holdings. Um, so that consists of Enterprise Rent-A-Car, National, and Alamo Car Rental. Um, through our Commute program, we work with companies to provide transportation solutions for their employees to get to and from work. Um, so again, as Todd mentioned, there's a few key areas the program can impact, um, but definitely recruiting and retention are amongst the most common, um, especially right now and definitely here in Wisconsin, where we have some more rural areas where public transportation isn't always available <clears throat> or employees may have longer commutes. So I'm just gonna go through a quick overview on how the program works. Um, as I go through this, just know that we can customize this to your company's needs. Um, so if you think you have a unique situation that doesn't necessarily fit the mold that I talk through, um, please feel free to reach out to me or ask questions in the chat box um, and see if we can help. Um, so in general, the employees commute isn't something that has always been a huge focus on for employers, um, just because it's something that's done on personal time. However, you know, I'm sure many of you have heard of transportation being a challenge for employees in various ways. Um, so companies are definitely realizing that there's a lot of value in providing a reliable option for employees to get to and from work. Um, you know, again, we mentioned, but one of the areas that we're hearing a lot about right now is with recruiting and trying to find ways to attract candidates. Um, with this option, companies can opening, open up their recruiting territories and pull in candidates from outlying areas. Um, I will say that it's easier to do this when you have a, a van already going with some current employees, and then you can just easily add in folks to that existing van pool. Um, however, some companies are using this as part of their recruiting campaigns um, and trying to form van pools with all new candidates, all new recruits. Um, a good example of this is a partnership that we've had with a staffing agency. Um, we have a, a partnership with QPS Employment Group um, that we've had over the last few years. Um, and again, they're a staffing agency. So essentially, they're trying to pull in new recruits all the time. And they've used this as a recruiting strategy over the last few years to attract candidates. Um, they have a number of vans with us throughout the state. So I know it's really helped improve their overall ability uh, to hire their associate employees. Um, employee retention is another area that the program can help and something that we hear a lot about. Uh, so, you know, once employees start to depend on this reliable method to get to, to and from work each day, 
it helps them to stay with that employer instead of potentially going elsewhere where they may not have access to transportation. Um, for those employees that do own and drive their own vehicles, they can actually save quite a bit of money when they share the cost of their commute. Um, so it can kind of make them feel as if they're getting a raise, um, but really just allows them to use that money on something more fun than driving to and from work. Um, there is a number of factors that goes into the potential cost savings, but on average, um, I would say that candidates save between four and $5,000 a year by sharing the cost of their commute as opposed to driving on their own. Um, productivity is another area that the program can help. Uh, these employees do tend to hold each other accountable to arrive on time for their shift. And then they also tend to be more refreshed for work because they can relax or catch a few extra minutes of sleep on their way to work. Um, when they aren't driving, of course. <laughs> um, and then of course, there is an environmental impact when you take vehicles off the road and share the commute. So this is something that can help companies achieve their sustainability goals. Um, so again, if you can help employees in this area, it will definitely have an impact on your business. Um, so transitioning to the program itself and how it works, um, the, the way it works is there's usually four to 15 people. It's a group of four to 15 people. Um, they meet at a central meeting location, drive the vehicle uh, to and from work. Um, at the end of their shift, they come back to that central meeting location and disperse from there. Um, when I say a central meeting location, it can be a park and ride. Uh, it can be, I think we have folks that do like a Walmart parking lot. Um, so really anywhere that the group can get to. Um, we do also have folks that will pick each other up along the way. So it doesn't necessarily have to be every van pool doesn't necessarily have to be set up the same. Um, so we're, we're flexible in that. Um, and then of course, uh, people do sign up, uh, they apply to become drivers so that they can share those driving responsibilities um, and then take turns so that everyone has a turn to relax. Um, and like I said, catch a few extra minutes of sleep uh, potentially on their way to work. Um, the program itself and what it includes. So it is very flexible. So it's just a month to month program. Um, there's no long-term leases or commitments to, you know, purchasing vehicles or anything like that. So very nice and flexible. Um, that said, people do tend to stay in our vehicles for quite some time. Um, I know pre-pandemic, our average route was active for about six and a half years. So it may not have been the exact same employees that were going on that same route, um, but a lot of the groups to do tend to stay together. Um, I've had groups that have been together for gosh, nine or 10 years, um, longer than I've been in the division here. Um, so it's really kind of cool to see, you know, those groups stay together for a long time. And then, you know, obviously that is something that can help with the retention piece. Um, the, the vehicles that we offer, it is seven passenger minivans, um, seven passenger SUVs, and then up to 15 passenger vans. Um, with the federal definition of a van pool, it is a seven passenger vehicle that is at least 50% full. Um, so that's where we get the four as a minimum. And then again, up to 15 people. Um, I think one of the biggest things that the program includes is our insurance. So if you've rented a vehicle, um, you're probably familiar with our damage waiver, but that is automatically included in our program. Um, so that covers the vehicle bumper to bumper up to a total loss. Um, and there's no deductible if anything does happen. So, um, well, and then it also covers up to a million dollars in third party liability. Um, so if there is an accident on the way to work, um, there's, you know, the coordinator or the driver is not having to file a claim with their insurance, pay out their deductible, worry about getting their vehicle to the shop and getting a replacement. Um, we would work with that group to make sure that they have a replacement vehicle and, and make sure it's a very seamless process for them. Um, and then also the cost of maintenance is included in the program as well as 24 seven roadside assistance. Um, so again, very nice and seamless so that they always have a reliable vehicle to drive. Um, one of the ways that we work with companies and help them formulate a plan is through what's called a mapping analysis. Um, this is where we get some employee information. So we don't get um, employee name and address for privacy reasons, but we usually will get like an employee ID and their address. And then we can also separate it by shift. Um, so we then put together a map and look for groups of employees that live near each other and work the same shift. So it just helps to um, just kind of take a look and see who might make the most sense to commute in together. 
Um, that said, you know, we, like I said, we do have some groups that will pick people up along the way and have a couple pickup locations. So this mapping is not necessarily the end all be all, but it's just kind of a good way to start and know what the program might look like for your existing employees. Um, I do wanna mention that there is no cost or obligation from the company in order to do this. So again, it's just kind of a great way to that we can help to create a targeted approach and know where to focus our efforts based on the company's goals. Um, the cost for the program itself and once the vans do form, that can be set up in a few different ways as well. Um, the most successful programs that we have do have an employer subsidy of some sort to help drive down the cost for the individual riders. Um, you know, of course, the less the program is to join, the more people tend to opt in. Um, so some companies will pay for all of it. Some will say, you know, employees, uh, you know, you pay $5 a day, I will pay the rest. Um, some will do a set amount per rider. Um, so there's a, a number of ways that they can be set up. Um, the other option is to have the employees split the cost amongst themselves. Um, and there is an IRS tax code that allows for employees to do a pre-tax payroll deduction of up to $270 a month per employee for a transit benefit. Um, so, you know, allowing this makes payments nice and easy for the employees and then also helps to save a little bit more on taxes versus paying with a credit card. Um, and even if the employer does a subsidy, there is still that option of doing the pre-tax for the employer, employee's portion as well. Um, so it can be done that way as well. Um, once we do the mapping and create a plan to determine how the program is going to be offered to the employees, we like to do what's called commuter connection meetings. Um, these may still look a little bit different right now, just depending on you know, the comfort level. Uh, some of them are still virtual. Um, but essentially what we do is we like to gather those groups or pockets of employees in a room together and explain the program the benefits and then any potential incentives or subsidies that the employer is providing. Um, you know, although we know that van pooling may not work for everyone, we do encourage everyone from the potential groups to attend these meetings because you may have some folks that um, have been wanting or needing this type of program and would opt in right away, but there may be other, other employees where this is a completely brand new concept for them. So they may not understand the full potential benefits or cost savings until we go through all of the information. Um, and the reason we like to get the groups together is so that they can see who they would potentially be riding with. Um, you may have some groups that will form on their own, but sometimes it does take those commuter connection meetings to help group those folks together. Um, I listed a few things on here that we've talked to companies about to help with the success of the program or just some unique challenges that they face. Um, you know, I, I talked about some of them already, but I just kind of wanted to touch on a few additional things. Um, I have talked to a number of companies where they work with some folks that may not be able to drive for various reasons. So one of the ways that you can help with that is to encourage someone or incentivize somebody uh, or a couple people to be drivers for that group. Um, and doing this, you could pay for their portion and allow them a free ride to work um, is, is one of the things that we have worked with companies on. Uh, you can also have a dedicated upfront parking spot to help the people riding feel extra special. Um, again, the subsidy and pre-tax payroll deduction I just talked about, but that can definitely help to attract more participants. Um, or you could potentially do a pilot program uh, where you focus on a particular group of employees that might have an immediate need or, you know, focus on certain areas where folks are coming from, you know, really far out. Um, we can do this without, you know, some of the mapping if you already have an idea of some groups. So it's a great way to test out the program. Um, and generally, you know, once people see those vans there, they kind of want to know more about it and be able to opt in. Um, but it is a great way to start. So that is, you know, again, it was pretty quick, but um, it's a very high level overview of the program. Um, I do want to go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, and I, you know, I have my information on here as well. And I think Todd was going to put it in the chat. So, um, you know, definitely if you have any unique challenges or anything like that, that you want to talk through, please let me know. Valerie, I did put your contact information in the chat so uh, okay. people can reach out there 
maybe if you want to, if you don't mind, maybe unsharing now since your contact info is out there. I actually, yeah. if you don't mind, I have a couple of questions. First of all, what yeah. what about a situation where you had uh, like we have Rosholt is you know twenty miles away, and there may be people from there, but they don't work at the same company. Is there any way that that can work? So we can do, I guess it depends on where they would be traveling to in the shift. Um, we have done mappings for multiple companies at the same time. So sometimes there's industrial parks and whatnot um, where, you know, we want to try and have groups of employees going to that same park. It's a little bit more manual of a process um, just because we have to try to match up those shifts and they may not always match up. Um, but you know, it's definitely an option that we can look at to potentially help a couple employers at once, um, and just be able to maybe open up the available employees for those groups. Right. Cause I think of, you know, we have great lakes on the call. We have, uh, McCain foods and a couple others. There may be several businesses by them like downtown great lakes and associated bank are, are, are two fairly large employers. So they could potentially work something out through you to, to have, make that happen. Yeah, yeah, we can do, like I said, we can do mappings for multiple companies at once. Um, we would just try to need to line up the shifts. Right, a, a second question, sorry for jumping in here, but you, okay. talked about, you talked about the cluster and route analysis. Yeah. And at that point, that's still a free service that, that you offer before making any commitment or any costs? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, like I said, it's just a great way to take a look at what a potential program could look like, um, you know, be able to kind of visually see the employees on a map. Um, it does give an Excel spreadsheet too of, of the list of groups. So sometimes the, the groups or the pockets of employees will be 10 people um, and then you can form like one band. Sometimes it's like 30 people um, and you can kind of form, you know, two, three vans, just depending on who wants to group together. Um, so it's just, it's just a great way to take a look at the program and see what it might look like. The, la the last comment I'll make, then I'll shut my mouth for a while is um, I, th you know, we've, we've heard there's a business down in, um, and I can't think of the community. We've talked to them before, but it's a cheese company and they do it themselves with their own employees, their own vehicles. And I know one of the big challenges and hurdles is the insurance component of that. So it's great to hear that that's wrapped into this particular program because that's always a concern. Yes, and, and you know, again, this is something that is technically done on employees' time. So sometimes we have questions about the risk of the company being involved, but um, you know, again, this is done on, on employees time. So it's basically like them choosing to carpool together on their own in their own vehicles or taking a bus. Um, so, you know, and it's just another benefit that they would opt into. Um, it's not something that the company is, is forcing on the employees. Um, so, you know, the, the insurance is included, um, but even so there would not be any risk to the employer for offering this type of service. Okay. Uh, uh, Christy posted a question. Uh, just to clarify, does the driver typically take the vehicle home or do some leave them at a certain meeting site or how does that work? That's a good question. So that is uh, flexible. <laughs> um, the driver can technically take the vehicle home. Any, any of the drivers technically can. Um, we provide two sets of keys and then we always like to make sure there's at least two drivers for a backup in case um, you know anything happens or someone falls in sick. Um, I would say it's probably easiest to leave it at a central meeting location just in case something happens. Um, but as long as there's good communication within the group, uh, yeah, we definitely have people that take it home. Um, sometimes again, employers will say, no, we want you to leave it here. Um, so you know that's something that we can determine with the employer, but for us, um, they can take it home. And then I do want to mention as well on that, there is actually 200 miles a month that is allotted for each van pool for personal use. Um, so what I will say about that is the insurance is a little bit reduced um, in terms of what the coverage provides, but they can, you know, if they need to move something or, you know, take something around that's a little bit bigger, um, there is a 200 mile per month um, allotment for that group. And that's for anyone that is approved as a driver, but it is 100 miles combined.
Uh, that's it in the chat box. Any any other questions from the folks on the call? So there's another. Uh, can you please email me a copy of the PowerPoint? Is that something we can send the PowerPoint out, Valerie, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah, you can send it out. That's fine. Okay, you'll have to send me a copy of it. Okay, sure. Then I, the, the, then I can send it to the participants. Or sure. Maybe, yeah. Did you did you do that already? I might have, but I'll send you another okay. one. Uh, the other thing, just so you know, we'll also, we're, again, we're recording this, so we will be uh, posting it on our social media and we'll tag some people too. So if, if others want to view it, they can certainly view the presentation as well, but we'll get the, we'll get the PowerPoint out too. And I'll actually send that to people who weren't able to be on the call that had registered as well, Valerie, so folks can get that and then we'll be able to call you for questions. Sure. Uh, let's see, somebody, what would you say is the average cost of the program per person? Um, Probably hard to per calculate. It's a, it is a little bit hard. Um, there, you know, there are a couple factors. So uh, the, the general base program comes with 2000 miles a month, which I would say covers most of our groups. Um, it does depend, I guess the one thing I didn't mention is that it does depend on their fuel too. So we do offer the ability to order a fuel card for each group and then the amount of gas that they use, it just goes into their monthly invoice. So I would say in general, um, kind of an average route, <laughs> um, I would say the cost would range from, I would say a hundred dollars to maybe 270 a month per person. But again, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. Mostly if there is a subsidy provided by the employer, but then also how many riders are in each vehicle. So for us, it's a set cost per month. Um, but again, it's so, you know, the number of riders will help to disperse that cost even more. Thank you for that. And I think, yeah, I think the, the issue is, you know, as difficult as it is finding talent, businesses have to figure out ways to, to bring their talent in. And this could be one of those, you know, one of those benefits that could tip the scale on somebody. And there, there is a cost to it, just like any benefit. So, but. The, right. Um, well, and you know, it costs a lot of money to constantly hire and retrain people as well. So, you know, if you can get them there and get them to stay there, um, you know, there's definitely uh, a value in providing that transportation solution and that subsidy for them. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, Anne, I just saw you jumped on. We will be sharing the PowerPoint and uh, Valerie's contact information is in the chat box and on the PowerPoint. And we'll also be sharing the, um, sharing the uh, presentation itself. It's being recorded. So we'll get that out to people too. Any other questions? All right, looks like not, which is fine. So Valerie, thank you again. The, uh, I know our team, the transportation team is gonna stick around and we're gonna chat some more after the meeting, but uh, Valerie, thanks to you for doing this. Thanks to everybody for getting on board. And uh, again, share it. If you have ideas for us as a group committee to research, let us know. Um, Cause that's, you know, that'll help all boats rise in a high tide or whatever that is. If we're all sharing ideas, that'll be a, a good thing. So thanks everybody for being on the call and we'll get you out the information as soon as we can. Thank Have you. Have a great day. Thanks, yep. Valerie. Bye-bye.